Whether you're thumbing through a stack of documents on a tray on your desk or looking at documents attached to emails that you open, when you first glance at a document, you quickly make some decisions about it. You know whether it seems like a formal document or a casual document. You know whether it feels like it would be hard to read the document or that you're being invited to read it. The first impressions that every document makes are based largely on the author's choice of fonts and font styles. We're going to take a look at some of the font choices that you can make in your documents. We'll begin by selecting all the text in the document. We'll choose fonts here on the font drop-down list. At the top are two theme fonts, two fonts that are designed to go together, one for headings and one for body in this document. If you can use these theme fonts, they're good to use because when we change to another theme, as you'll learn about in Chapter 6, your document will be redesigned based on the fonts that you chose. If you choose theme fonts, they'll flex. If you chose any other font, they won't. However, let's just take a look at fonts in general for an entire document. The font being used in our document now is Calibri, which is an easy-to-read sans-serif font. Let's take a look, though, at applying a different font. For example, Comic Sans is equally easy to read. Until recently, it was the easiest to read font on your computer, not just for folks who read casually, but for text readers and for the visually impaired. However, this is not a font that you would want to use, for example, in a legal document. This is a font that is used in casual settings. On the other hand, another very readable font, Times New Roman, is used extensively in the legal community and is used in many segments of the business community because it's easy to read and it's also a very formal font. Casual, formal, a mix of the two. If we change the font for just a single paragraph, we would select a paragraph and simply choose a new font. Another paragraph, one new font. We can also change the type size. Simply choose a new size from the drop-down list. Notice, as with fonts, that when I point to the list, I get a preview of what that font will look like applied to the document. So we'll just make this a little bit larger. I can also change my font size using the Grow Font and Shrink Font buttons here, smaller and larger, or I can use shortcut keys. If I hold the control key and hit the greater than or less than symbols, then I can shrink and grow my font by increments. The increment, by the way, is the increment that's in the list right here. First by ones, then by twos, then later by fours and by dozens. I can also change my font color. I have access to over 16 million different colors that I can use. Some of them are here. There are more colors to be found on the More Colors drop-down, and I can choose some gradient colors if I wish. This is for Two Trees Olive Oil. I might want to choose a dark green as opposed to a black to pick up a color theme that would speak for my company. Remember when I do this for a document that I'm going to print, I of course want to have a color printer and I'll run through that green cartridge a lot faster than I might otherwise. So I have a document that has different formatting applied and I'd like to know more about the formatting. If I click for example in this paragraph I can easily see that the font is Cambria in a 12 point I might look here and think this is the color, but this is actually the last color I applied. If I want to know more about the formatting for this particular section of text, I can hold Shift and hit F1 to open the Reveal Formatting task pane on the right-hand side. Notice that it's selected the entire word that the insertion point is resting in, and it tells me information about the font, about the language, and also some information about paragraphs, which we'll talk about in the next chapter. What if I wanted to compare one paragraph to another? For example, these two fonts look similar. I wonder if these two paragraphs are formatted in the same way. So I can choose one paragraph, say I'd like to compare it to another selection, and choose another paragraph. And the differences between these two paragraphs will be pointed out here in the Reveal Formatting Task Pane's list of differences. So it tells me that the first selection uses Calibri as the font and the second uses Tahoma as a font. And I can decide whether that's okay or simply looks a little confusing to the reader. If I want to change the font for the entire document again, I can triple click on the whole document and simply change it all to Calibri. Or if I wanted to reformat this section, 
based on this font, I can choose the first font, click the Format Painter, and paint this format. Note now that these two sections show no formatting differences. When you're done with the Reveal Formatting Task Pane, simply close it. Fonts give your document character. Choose your fonts wisely so that they accurately represent the contents of your document, but also so they invite your users to read more.